Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro Ruiz, Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we're here to share our 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. It's a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody, hanging out in the Discord chat room. If you'd like to join us uh, during the show, you can drop in a comment, questions, banter, on the Discord. So you can go there by heading over to discord.gg slash Adafruit. That's where we're hanging out in the live broadcast chat room. You can take a moment to say hello to everybody and good morning over here in the States. It's 11 a.m. Eastern time. It's a beautiful morning. We are hanging out in all of the chat rooms. Giving shout out to everybody hanging out in the YouTube. We got Charles Beneford. We got Pablo from Argentina. Inside of the Discord, we got uh, Jeff Appler, we got hey, Mr. Certainly Bruce, Hello, Bruce. we got uh, Gary Z, Andy Calloway, uh, Armin VP, I am Josh H. Also hanging out in the Twitch. Yanni's hanging out in there, as well as Facebook. Just loaded up. Let's see people hanging out in there as well. Good morning to everybody hanging out this morning. Yay! Sweet. Hope everybody's doing well. Well, we'll uh, run through the kind of the housekeeping, we'll start off with adafruit.com slash free. Check it out, all the free things that uh, are, are running right now. Um, for every order right now, for the next 100 days, I've, I wish I knew which day we're in, but <laughs> uh, for, for orders that are a dollar or more, that's basically every order, we're um, giving away these free black surgical style masks for US orders only. For orders that are $99 or more, you get the mask plus a free Perma Proto half-size breadboard. For orders that are 149 or more, you get the breadboard, the black surgical style mask, and a randomly chosen um, STEMI QT breakout board. For orders that are 200 or more, you get the breakout board, the Perma Proto free mask, and free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And then for orders that are 299 or more, you get everything I just said, plus a free Circuit Playground Express. It's uh, you can get as many freebies as you'd like and it's for a limited time only. Check out adafruit.com slash free for all the things that I just said. <laughs> we keep adding more STEMI QT uh, boards every week. So every week you place an order, you're gonna get probably a new one. And uh, if you're registered uh, with Adafruit as an, with an account, you can, um, we'll, we'll keep track of uh, the boards that you get so you don't get the same one twice. Good, good? Excellent. Good. Okay. Circuit Pythons happen mostly every Monday, uh, with the exception of holidays here in the U.S. And we had one. President's Day was on Monday, so the meeting happened on a Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You can always check in with uh, the Circuit Python devs and the folks in the community. It's a great time, and if you don't want to check it out live, you could always check out the archive on YouTube or any of your favorite podcasting services. Blinka was a cake once. Delicious she cake was here. eaten. I need to pull up that photo where like the <laughs> circuit python devs are eating. I want to ask Jeff, Jeff, did you try out the cake? Did you eat a little bit of Blinka? I'm not sure if, if anyway. <laughs> I heard it was raspberry, so it was... Right, it was a <laughs> raspberry um, flavored Blinka cake. So the newsletter happens once a week. You can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter to check that out. It's more focused on the weekly uh, products that are added to the store. So you can check that out. Again, adafruit.com slash newsletter. For daily newsletter, adafruitdaily.com is a separate website that you can check out and register, not register, but subscribe to different categories that might, that you might like, like such as <laughs> uh, uh, Python on hardware, 
uh, biohacking, maker news, 3D printing, and many other ones. So if you're interested in getting daily stuff in your inbox, um, projects and news, um, adafruitdaily.com is the place to check it out. All right. That's what's going on. Oh, we also got the jobs board. Check out if you are a maker looking for a gig or if you're an employer looking for some makers, you can check out the Adafruit jobs board. Head over to jobs.adafruit.com. Yeah. All right, I'm going to jump back into the Discord chat room and see if uh, Jeff ate the cake or not. I must know. Oh, he yeah, said okay. he, came he said now I came along after that. Well, maybe uh, for some sort of anniversary when uh, folks can, can meet up again, maybe we can all eat a circuit python cake. Some good we got times, construction eh? going on in the background there, so if you hear some beep beeps, that's no, what it I is. Think I, we feel it more than we hear yeah. it. Good vibrations. All right, I'm ready to get the, the, the project stuff started. Are you ready? All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's awesome project. This week's awesome project by was Carter. put together by Carter Nielsen yeah. and Lady Ada. Really, they collabed on this one together. Uh, this one's using uh, the RGB LED matrix and the matrix portal along with this um, CO2 sensor. It's the SCD30 from Sensorion. And let's just take a look at, uh, well, so this learn guide was published a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. And um, it's a full, full guide. You can check it out. The code's been up on GitHub. And what we thought we'd do is put together just a video for it, just to kind of promote the thing, and to create a little 3D printed bracket so it's a little bit easier and more secured uh, to the frame of the display. These LED displays are really awesome. Um, they're really bright. They look great. And they have a built-in frame where you can uh, attach things to. They're using M3 screws. And this project's nice because it uses the matrix portal. And the matrix portal will work with any standard kind of LED display that has a hub 75 port on it. That's this guy here. And you can daisy chain these together and whatnot. But it's cool. It's running. All, it's all on circuit Python using display IO to display this beautiful bit map along with this text using the text. Uh, what is it? The text display library. Sorry, the dog came in. <laughs> like I had to close the door. So yeah, this is taking readings right now, and um, the sensor is housed in a little 3D printed snap fit case that's mounted to this bracket that's secured to the frame. Um, you know, uh, Pedro and Carter uh, collaborated on the design, and shout out to Carter for coming up with this this cool thing. Because before the original idea was to just kind of create cutouts for the sensor for airflow to come into the sensor. Um, but it looks a little, it always looks weird when you see these randomly placed cutouts. So what Carter thought was like, hey, why don't you make the cutout and spell out like letters? So here it says CO2 in these little dots. How did you even do that? Oh, never mind. Maybe don't ask. How did you do that? Just Illustrator. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So that's cool. You used Illustrator. I'd be like in Fusion spending hours. I mean, bringing <laughs> in a Fusion, but we could talk about that as yeah, we go sorry. into the guide. Yeah, just designer. Uh, the other things that we were looking at was uh, having it be in place easy because there are some guidelines on the way to mount the sensor on here. There are, and the way yes. that the, the diagrams and illustrations show it's a little bit confusing so I wanted to make sure that we had that ironed out so we could have this uh, nicely displayed in a way that's not messing with the heat or having like direct any other sunlight should direct not sunlight. be on there. There's a there's a nice data sheet that you can check out with, with um, photos illustrations mm -hmm. but like Pedro said they're more like cross sections and they're a little bit uh, confusing if you're not sure yeah so we wanted to make sure that this was nice and simple and easy to put together so there's no screws in terms of mounting the uh, sensor mm -hmm. uh, everything it just press fits into place we have some screws just to hold the um, the brackets and the case together and the reason we did that was because we wanted to make sure that these brackets could be updated to have different sizes these work with the, the one that came with adabox which is this matrix and the larger one i have the pid listed in the guide so if you want to go with a much bigger display which would totally make sense if you want to have this scene across the room i uh, wanted to have uh, two different sizes for that without having to update the entire case you know have a one piece and just put it together with some screws and then the uh, uh, rest is just plugged in with the little stemma qt cable there nice and easy so there's no soldering um 
And then we have a nice little wall mount, so we can easily have a yeah. screw or hook attached to that, since there isn't really any... Yeah, I mean, you can kind of put it back here, but this simplifies uh, how uh, it's the a little, screw is in there. Yeah, it's a little like, hey, let's off, let's uh, elevate it so that, you know, this, so that it's not kind of at an angle. Exactly. So that's why these are a little bit tall, but um, they're countersunk, these M3 screws, there's just two of them. And did we talk about that this display was the display that came with your Ada box? Exactly. I'm really hopeful that the supply is the same because uh, we run into oh, some issues yes. where the display gets updated and there's no real way for us to know that that was updated. So let us know if you have your Ada box and the mounting holes are different. You can tag us or or, or write it up in the forms. This is unfortunately happened right in the middle of a project. Right, where, it did. It, we did several matrix. We have the projects. design already. We right. get another uh, shipment in to right. document been, the project yeah. and all the holes have been moved yeah. around. One of the easiest fixes I think that you could do if you have a slight adjustment of holes mm -hmm. uh, Again, you're going to have to have your own printer and have some know-how of... Or maybe just cut out of wood. Or some yeah, acrylic. just have like a little uh, like adapter piece that like just moves it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I'd bring this up because this just happened with one of our older SAN demo matrix it's projects. It's like a five-year-old project. 2018, yeah. Oh, 2018? Okay, yeah. maybe not five years ago, but... I mean, we saw shipment change right, right. in the middle of a project. Right. You know, it was like a yeah. week in. Yeah. So, I don't know what to say except know, like, that you're gonna have to be like macgyver to with these um, projects and be able to adjust your own mounting holes on that super simple but yeah i get why uh some people just, uh, yeah. have to order it yeah. <laughs> and right. by order i mean like the the printed right part like itself. if you don't have a printer and you order the part and the part comes it doesn't fit it's like oh, yeah boy. that is it probably would have been cheaper to buy a printer at that point mm. uh, in any case uh yeah everything snap fits in i have these nice little lid uh, lip on the uh, for the lid to catch onto there yeah. like you were saying before this is just i think you can get like a tech a font for this um, unfortunately i wasn't able to find a free one even inside of uh, oh, adobe yeah. creative cloud they like give you a bunch of font libraries and none of them are not one, one of them have <laughs> a dot uh, font yeah. this so is this great. is just really image like this is just image traced inside of illustrator and you can combine or you can make a uh, vectors out right. of that to bring into Fusion. I Cut like how the, the, the dots match the dots of the font here as well. That's exactly what Carter said. Yeah. yeah. Carter's got the design sense. Yeah. yeah. Really Everything good. easily Very plugs clever. into the back with a USB-C. We uh, recommend Yay, using powers. the uh, the there. power bricks that come with the Raspberry Pi 4. Right, because we have this plugged into the wall. The, the cable goes down. Um, Hopefully it's mounted close to a wall board, mm -hmm. um, an outlet. I mean, you can get an extension and all that. Uh, don't be alarmed with the poor Black. rating on the CO2 oh, levels right. in the it's room. It's because we're breathing into it right we're now. Breathing right into it. The AC is not on right. since it's fairly cool outside. We should open windows, but again, there's noise and construction out there. Yeah. It usually reads around 700 for the uh, parts per... Yeah. Don't over. blow into it. Oh, <laughs> we yeah, have let's, to speak, let's go ahead so. and do that though. So if I blow right into it, you can kind of see the um, the timing of how long it takes to actually so read that. Yeah, went up 100, 200, 300. Well, trying to get to warning. Warning! You are breathing too close. Yeah, so this is what it's supposed to warn you about if there's a bunch of people in a room. Dang. <laughs> so if there's a bunch of people in the room, Hello. I should <laughs> warn you that the CO2 levels Hi, have Pedro. exceeded <laughs> safety. How are you? <laughs> we're brothers, we're, we're just messing with each other. <laughs> Dang, we're dying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, let's go ahead and jump into the guide for this. All right. Excellent <laughs> write-up by Carter Nielsen. Yep. So this explains a little bit about the CO2 levels and how everything is measured. So definitely give that a read. There's also the technical data sheet for the sensor itself. Yeah, this was inspired by a couple other projects that we have linked here. So there's a tweet. And there's also a project that was posted on Hackster uh, that used an ESP8266 and a different sensor. So there's just a little bit of background on, on uh, the, the project where it was inspired from. Um, so the sensors, uh, oh my gosh, they're back in stock. What? They were <coughs> yesterday. Uh, they're now today. Please That's pick great. up two more. <laughs> Want me to get two more? Yeah. Mm, I uh, can't. Oops. Sorry. Get out of there. I know. <laughs> Hit the back button. Retreat, retreat. <laughs> I can't. Oh, well. 
Well, anyway, get those, folks, before we buy them all out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's available right now, um, and Lamar talks about it. I think there's also a, uh, it was a product pick of the week as well, right, by John? Yeah, so the thing that got me interested in this project was, you know, uh, it's super cool, but they were actually installing these in the office, uh, like on each floor to make mm -hmm. sure that the employees are, you know, in good yeah. health with having all the windows open and secure circulating, yeah. especially with all the cold right now. Just wanted to make sure that everyone's safe. So I wanted to have those in our rooms as well. Cool, so uh, CircuitPython support, there's a driver for it. Also, of course, Arduino. Um, and perhaps this could be a, uh, a thing that could run off with a single board computers using Blinka. I'm not sure if that's something, but there's uh, you know documentation in the, uh, the primary learn guide. And I guess we'll jump back into the project learn guide. So just a couple things that you might want to pick up. We got some STEM QT cables back in stock as well, different uh, lengths. Hey, these are back in stock, which are these cables. <laughs> that's great. I'd probably get the longer one, the 100 millimeter long mm -hmm. one. Unless you want to do this project, in that case, you can pick a shorter QT cable. Um, but yeah, we got the cables. Of course, this is uh, the Adabox uh, matrix portal. So it's the 64 by 32 LED matrix. Um, currently, it is, yeah, currently out of stock, so maybe sign up for a notification. Um, and then um, the actual matrix display is out of stock as well. So be sure to sign up for notifications when they're back in stock. And then the last thing, I guess, that's optional is this acrylic, this black LED acrylic. It's really nice. That's what we're using. Um, it's great for camera. It kind of hides the flicker and it hides the harshness of the light. There's a little bit of flicker, but that's just because the color. Um, but yeah, we really like this stuff and we attach it with like this um, double-sided kind of adhesive thing that's really tough. And, and that's what we ended up using because we got tired of printing brackets and having to like fit the bracket on there on the corners. Uh, so that's how we got the acrylic attached there. But we also stocked the acrylic pre-cut as well that'll fit the matrix display. This specific one that came with the, uh, the Adabox. So that's just a quick um, briefing on the parts, the hardware. Yeah. All right. We good? Doing yeah, nice. just checking out this uh, font that Jeff had found. Nice. Which would look nice with this. Font finding. All right, continuing on to a little bit more description yeah. on the CO2 levels here. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this one gives you a little bit of the data sheet, so it pulls that out, gives you some more values to look at. Um, this breaks down uh, the, the kind of tiers of, um, of quality, of air quality. So um, parts per million is the value here, PPM. Anything that's, uh, I guess, less than 1,000 is good. Anything around 1,000 to 2,000 is poor. Anything that's 2,000 to 5,000 has a warning. Anything that's over 5,000 is, is dang. Do you mean dangerous? Sort of, but not like immediately dangerous. Yeah, so you can read up on that. And then this gives you um, more of a graphical look at the, uh, the different emojis, the different, you know, yeah, emojis and their, uh, their values when it, when it hits them. So there you go. And of course, you can change. These are bitmap images. So you can full, full control over changing them if you want to theme them out or use a different font. You can, uh, you can do that. All right, the next page talks about, it's kind of the built-in um, page that's mirrored from the, the matrix portal. It just shows you how to attach this power cable to the little screw block, um, the screw standoffs that are built into the matrix portal for powering it. You get a, it's two wires, power and ground, and you use a screwdriver um, to attach these kind of, these prongs, uh, terminals, I guess, to, to the power and ground standoffs. So pretty easy to do that. Uh, no soldering. You can use the cable that it came with. And uh, that's what it looks like. And then you can put the acrylic on top if you'd like. Yeah. Look in the acrylic here and we got yep. questions on if we can if we have any other matrix sizes and different pitch sizes. I just paste it in in the Yay. search on yes, the shop. We, do. we have a bunch of different ones. Yeah, we have a good amount of them. Small, big, yep, yep, yep. We have them at 32 by 32, at 64 by 32, and smaller, all different pitch sizes from like three to four. Yes. Cool. All right, the next page is walk you through installing CircuitPython on your matrix portal. Again, this is a mirrored page from the kind of primary guide for the matrix portal. So we'll just kind of skim through it, but it's as easy as going to circuitpython.org or clicking this link. 
searching for the matrix portal and downloading the latest version by clicking on that lovely big purple button that says download. Um, so you grab the UV2 file and then you can uh, put the board in bootloader mode by double pressing the reset button and then checking out the LED and making sure that it turns um, the color that it's supposed to. I think red. <laughs> or maybe it's green. Forget. I think it's green. Yeah. So it walks you through that, turning your um, installing CircuitPython onto uh, onto your matrix portal. Yeah. And then this one, the next page walks you through installing the library bundle. You want to grab the whole library bundle and pick out the libraries that are dedicated uh, for this project. So this just gives you a list of them all. Um, there's a nice handful of them. You don't want to put the whole bundle on because it's, it's not going to fit, fit on, the, on the Spy Flash chip. So you just want to pick the ones you want, or that you need, rather, the required dependencies. All right, and then the code page has more additional libraries. Um, here is the SCD30, that's the sensor library, and then the Adafruit image load, which will uh, load the bitmaps. So you can check this one out. And then here's a nice screenshot of what your USB drive should look like, your CircuitPy drive, right? And then here's the code. It's a, uh, it's a thing on GitHub that you can fork or pull or do things with, so that's really cool. Check it out. It's got plenty of comments and things. And uh, you can use, uh, I guess, Moo to, or any of your favorite IDE to get a reading of, uh, of the stuff in the, in the serial monitor. Yeah, anything else? Did you have to change anything here, or it just worked as is? No, there was no cool. changes. Loaded it up and worked right away. It kind of scales. Well, I mean... Depending on the, the matrix right. size, yeah. So you're able to... Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. One thing that you can change, the default is to have the... Um, the orientation of the screen is yeah. flipped, so you can see it right here. It's just commented out right there. Mm. Uh, had to do 270 instead of 90 if you want the uh, USB power to be pointing down instead of up. So this would be, this is 90? That's 270. So this is 270 with mm -hmm. uh, the with board pointing down oriented there. down, which mm -hmm. is what we think when you want mounted to the wall, that's probably what you want. But if you have something on the ceiling, then you're going to want to flip yeah. it this way. So you, you change that value here, just uncomment this line right here, 24, and then comment out line 23. I think this is going to be the most um, used. That's what we thought. 270. Uh, some folks have very particular, <laughs> like you said, maybe their maybe their outlets like on the maybe. ceiling, like we do in the garage. Maybe they have a garage. So that's a good note. So orientation. You can't do this orientation, right? This sort of landscape orientation. Um, I mean, you'd have to change the graphics you'd have to around. Change the graphics around. All right, but it's not too bad. You could take a look at the documentation and play with some numbers and coordinates. We got some links okay. in here from Jeff saying that uh, Tap Plastics has the sure LED do. acrylic. They sure do. Not for, uh, inexpensive to have these cut, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. you can get them cut, um, pre pre cut for you. Or you can just cut them yourself. I think that's going to be a lot more cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Get a scoring tool than a T square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, Carter, right. and Carter is in here saying that uh, he was yeah. lucky to get some scraps from the local store, so definitely always look for that. Sweet. Any local Good shops. Mm -hmm. Again, not required, but it uh, it does soften it just a little bit. Um, you can sort of pry this off. A little bit. Uh, it, it really the difference makes it is nice. it, Don't take it off. Eh, Every time you take it off, you're making it blue. I know. It goes with it. Yeah, that's hard. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It almost creates a haze. It does. It creates a haze. Um, that's all the CO2. Again, there. not required. <laughs> and the haze is from all the CO2 that are feeding into it. <laughs> all right, so cool. Let's jump back to the learn guide. Okay, so this page will just ensure that you get all the libraries set up, and here's the code. All right. Next one sets up the sensor. Mm -hmm. So plug it in. <laughs> yep. Plug it into the demo port. Uh, can you use any of the Stemma ports here? I guess just I think so. Image. Okay. There shouldn't be a difference between yeah. which port you choose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I did try because we were getting some different sensor readings between okay. uh, two of them, and I thought that might have been it, but it wasn't. Yeah. So here's a little bit of a little diagram on the, the placement uh, that okay. they recommend for that. A little confusing um, from me looking at it, thinking it uh, does it go inside the frame? Right. Is it like? on the side right. or on Here's the inside. Here's the whole data sheet, so you can 
get an idea of you know what how not to mount it i suppose mm -hmm. this is originally how we had it mounted because we thought you know from the diagram illustration that it was mm -hmm. that they're pointing it inside, inside. Yeah. yeah that's why i was mounting it that it's way like and the uh, cargo was like no just mount it on the side point it outwards yeah. away from the heat source yeah and uh, here's another one where airflow mm -hmm. like you don't want it to like flow right through it i guess like that here's a a look at protecting from the sunlight so you don't want it to completely hit to the sensor like direct sunlight on there yeah so here's some ideas like here's like another wall i guess that blocks the sun but still allows light to pass through or something yeah so there you go there's that and uh back over here um yeah so take note if you are uh, reworking this project putting it in a different frame you'll definitely want to consider this stuff take a look at the guidelines all right, and uh, hey, hey, if you want more in-depth coverage, um, there's a main guide here for the, uh, you know, the primary guide for the SCD30 uh, sensor. I think sensor. that was uh, Katni's uh, guide on explaining yeah. how everything works there in the code and some of the fritzing for it. Cool, what the font, that's great. I remember what the font, that used to be a that website. Right, that was the first place I checked for the, um, for the font of, that Jeff put in there for the matrix font not listed there yeah this project has no font file it's like built in right uh i think they're like gifs yeah it's a bit of that font yeah it's the io or, cool. sorry, so BMP. this will walk you through BMP. kind of a little bit of the maybe, or maybe more of like how to create a sprite sheet for your font file creating a font file just more info on that these little bits ah so if you're interested in really diving deep into this io you can check out this and there's probably a some more stuff in the um, display IO guides. But hey, here's the, uh, the, uh, the bitmap is a single bitmap that's uh, using like a tile grid inside of display IO so that it only shows, you know, it loads one bitmap and then it can kind of um, reveal <laughs> the, that, the, the correct, the corresponding emoji when, with the, the, with numbers. the corresponding value. <laughs> So if you want to change up the faces and the colors, you can do that and then whatever. I know, I wanted to do that. I want to have like Adabot's head in there, but it ran out of time. Yeah, blink ahead or something. Mm -hmm. Or blink ahead, yeah. Yeah, with X's and eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch of like blink -a graphics that would probably fit in there. All right. So awesome, awesome documentation, Carter. And then the last page, 3D printing page, just walks you through what we, we talked about, the parts list. Um, you can download the CAD file, the source file for it, or the STLs, which is want to print them out. They print without any supports. Um, we use PLA filament. These screws are just M25 screws, just two of them to attach the bracket to the, to the snap fit case. That's really it there. Um, the sensor itself just snaps into these uh, built-in standoffs inside the case. And uh, you know, just reference the image for the right orientation of it, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. And we have the uh, the parts broken down for the larger display and the more medium display that is included with the Ada box. Oh, cool. So you have those different sizes there. And of course, you can edit yeah, the, the sketches inside of Fusion if you want to, uh, or if you need to update the mounting holes on that yeah. from an updated supplier. Yeah. LG standing for large, I suppose. Yes. Is it still on our wall? So we could compare them maybe, like the sizes? No, it's in the other room. Yeah, uh, like but just want to uh, point out that it works with bigger ones and also tried it on this little smaller little one. Baby one. And it looks pretty good too. You can still see it across the room, even on a little tiny one. Wow. So the code's already running on there, mm -hmm. on this guy. And you want to note, like, depending on, like, look how much further out this board is. It's just the design of where the, the hub was placed on this PCB. So just be aware of that, that that's, that's a thing. It's not always going to be in the same position because mm -hmm. all these displays are different. Yeah. Cool. So right. We got some discussions going on on the Discord about uh, if the C, what is the CD30, the SGP30, yeah. uh, if it's the same. And uh, Brent's it's, in there, tell him that not, no, it's not the same. It's not a it's true CO2 VOC. Sensor. You can watch um, Lamar chat about it in the product page. So if you go over here. And this guy is bright. And if you click on that link there, um, there's always videos um, that, that, that happened on Ask an Engineer. And this one, Lamar talks about it. 
little bit more in depth about why it's different than that sensor. She even calls it out by name, I think. Cool. And let's head back over to Discord. Much more uh, conversations on different sensors there. Carter <laughs> is saying, yeah, for tap plastics, if we're doing a small run, it is going to be more money. And uh, people are liking the <laughs> good poor yeah, warning, warning dang. dang. Words to live by. Mm -hmm. That's right. All the, this means. all the links to the products and the code and the CAD files are all posted in there as well. So you guys can pick those out. I think it's also worth noting, like it, this, this code could be adapted to work with an OLED display that's small. I mean, that's kind of the demo that's running on the product page. So if you're not, you know, if you don't want to use a giant matrix display, you could use um, one of the Stemma OLED displays, like this feather one here. So you can make it much more compact, mm -hmm. more discreet than like this giant advertising sign Which that says. Is making core. me g want to grab the little tiny one that I have that is using the SGP30. Should if you can it? grab it quickly. Grab it real quick. Yeah. Just because it's so cute. I love it's how so the um, all the text loads right up on it inside this little tiny so OLED display. Up my MIDI controller so I can play some, uh, so some grab tunes. Battery that's grab charged. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, of course, this battery's dead. <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> you don't have any I light bills around here, batteries. do you? But it's this little guy here. Let me find a battery. It's because I love how tiny mm -hmm. this little guy is. Yeah, we'll go get a battery. But uh, this is a little, um, these are little 3D printed brackets that uh, support Lego studs. So that's a Lego bracket and all these little Stemma uh, mounts are, they have studs on the back of them, so. Oh, they're all perfect dead. day, they're all dead. Yeah, they're all dead. <laughs> I mean. Oh, here's a USB right here. Oh, well there you go. Yeah, it's plugged in and everything. So it's running off a cutie pie. Yeah. And we oh, have no, the, oh no, those are the BMP uh, 680, sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there you go. Sensors. So you can have something that's as small as this. Right. And the demo code, an example code, you can adapt it so it'll work with just about any of the displays as long as you initialize it correctly. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Brent's posting cool. that there is ways to hack that other sensor, but it's you know just not going to be the exact readings that it would be if you're using the, uh, okay. the SCD30. Sweet. All right, well, that's uh, that's what we got this week. We can uh, share some other things that we got working on in the background. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's What Are We Prototyping? Yeah. All right, so uh, back over to the Pico projects. Um, real quick before, I have a 3D model of the, uh, the SCD30 CO2 sensor. Check that out. Um, Sensurion. Um, had a nice step file, or at least I think it was like Snap EDA is a website. When I searched for it on DigiKey, they had a link to Snap EDA, and you can download uh, the step file. But I have went ahead and like modeled up the Adafruit breakout that has it on top or has it on below, and you can download this model. Um, I have linked it in the learn guide for uh, the primary learn guide for the CD30 CO2 monitor. So if folks want to make a model with this uh, a case that's different, you can uh, you can use the parts. And we have a bunch of other parts that are in our GitHub repository, if you want to check that out, for just CAD parts. Um, but we try to add them to all of the primary learn guides for each product so that they're linked in there. OK. Now what are you prototyping? All right. Um, so I guess I'll show off the, uh, the, the MIDI fighter project. So this is a Raspberry Pi Pico inside here. Um, four by four buttons, 16 buttons. It's going to be running Circuit Python. There's a five-way navigation switch that we can uh, pick and change on the fly the MIDI notes for each one of these different buttons. Um, this is a collaboration project with Liz Clark, so she's writing up the code. And um, what I wanted to do was uh, create a, a, a Laravel Air tutorial on how I put together this print in place um, handle. So this handle is printed in, in a single print, and it has these, uh, this little bit of articulation here. Um, and then there's these two mounting holes there. So all this prints in one piece. It can't be disassembled, and it can print without any support material. So I thought that was kind of a neat mechanism. It's very simple, uh, and I figured I'd, I'd model it up and, and show how I did that. Uh, so more gear needs handles, so that's, that's what I got. So I have the handle here as a separate piece. It uh, 
prints like this. This is the orientation. Like imagine this is the bed of your 3D printer, and it just prints like that. Um, and uh, you have this full ar articulation here. You can spin this around. Um, so the hinge bit is uh, inside there, and you can't see it. It can't be disassembled. So I'll take a look here at the CAD just to kind of show you um, you know, a sample of it in CAD land. So here's what it looks like in CAD. I've uh, used the, the interactive joints so I can like simulate the, the degrees of freedom that you get when you're rotating it. And then you can use the cross section just to get a look at sort of the clearances. Um, I found a value of 0.4 millimeters of clearance between all the surfaces when you're printing um, something that's uh, print in place. You want to have a little bit bigger uh, kind of gap or clearance between faces to avoid these parts fusing together when you're printing them. So I walk through that in the layer by layer tutorial. I also walk through slicing and I give a little bit of, a, of some rule of thumb if you want to make a, a, a similar mechanism. So uh, that's what I got. That's, uh, that's a video that you can check out. I also have uh, links to the layer by layer playlist uh, down in the description of this video posted all of those in all the chats so you guys can check it out. I, I think this could be really useful. It's not going to, you know, I, I can see it having multiple uses. Maybe you want to do a pull drawer and not just for an enclosure, but maybe for something else. Um, very similar to like your briefcase style um, handle, right? So while I was doing this, I was reminded by a project I've done a couple of minute, a couple of minutes, a couple of months ago, maybe a couple of years ago. It, it uses a very similar uh, kind of style of hinge. So this is a little kind of play on the play date that um, may or may not come out. And it uses a rotary, um, it's basically a crank. It has a spinning handle paddle thing and this articulating hinge, which is pretty similar to, to this mechanism here. So I figured I'd pull it out and, and actually see what's going on with the play date. <laughs> I can see it still hasn't shipped yet. Um, you know, just a little bit of shade, but come on, man. Um, so you could 3D print this in one piece, and uh, I figure maybe I'd do a layer by layer, because I never quite did a layer by layer on this piece here. Um, so I figured why not remake it um, so it's a little bit more simpler. Um, so I made a big version of it just to see how it would work scale-wise. But this prints like that on the bed, and then you have this piece that can articulate 180 degrees, a little bit more than that. And then this paddle here, um, you can't see it on the inside, but there's a uh, bit of a chamfered edge in here so that this cannot come out and it can freely spin around. So if you want to make a, a print to place hinge, um, let me know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's a little bit of a, a detour, but um, I think it's nice to kind of revisit mechanisms because I hadn't done this since whenever, the <laughs> whenever that happened. Um, and I. I this is a great way to revisit it and like. Um, yeah, you always figure out how to. I figured out how to do it a little bit more less complicated. Exactly. Than so many sketches and crap. Like it really simplified it. So I'm excited to do a, a, a tutorial on this one too. It happens every time you go back on past projects, you mm -hmm. figure out a quicker technique For sure. or a simplified way to do something. Yeah, because you're not quite sure what you need, so you kind of come up with all these sketches and mm -hmm. your timeline gets all crazy. Yeah. Now it's like just I know exactly what shapes I need, so. Um, yeah, if folks want to build this one, it's a USB HID device, so I use it to scroll. <laughs> like all it does is a mouse scroll. Um, it's running Circuit Python, and it's a itsy bitsy um, Adafruit itsy bitsy M zero M zero. So that's cool, and that's all that's wired to it. Just a couple wires here. Really, really simple. So if folks want to make a crank, feeling cranky. <laughs> we got some votes that uh, people want to see that layer by layer. So. Me too. Oh, I forgot. This clicks in too. This would be such a great little controller for something. Maybe turn it into a MIDI controller. Remember, then, we did a crank. Uh, we, we did something else with it. I forget what it was. Oh, it was like the Pi Gamer. Yeah, yeah the Pi Gamer crank. Yeah, if you search for crank in uh, in the Adafruit Learn Guide, in the Adafruit Learn System, there's a couple. There's probably a few cranks. I also made this for our little solder dispenser, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, John shows how to make one out of cardboard. Here's the Pi Gamer one. Um, yeah, I think it plays GIFs. Like you can. Mm -hmm. It steps it'll, through it each steps frame. It steps through a frame of a GIF, which is kind of fun. But I don't know. Cranks. Cranks, Prince in Place. There, there's so much to that that I'd like to explore. Um, so I hope that inspires folks. 
uh, too, to think about some print-to-place mechanisms. I looked behind me to bring up the next prototyping, but I think it's disassembled in the other room as you're documenting. Yeah, the, the wings are uh, next week. in works. Yay. You want to take a quick look at uh, in the work learn guide? Oh, I'm not signed in, so I can't. Whoops. But yeah, I'm, it's a it's going to be a heavy guide. There's a lot of assembly to it. Each each kind of piece is is a kind of like a sub module that you kind of have to assemble, mm -hmm. and you get all these pieces, and at the end you put it all together. It's a uh, it's a build. Next week. Finally. Next week, yeah. Next week, <laughs> finally, the release of the wings. Uh, shout out uh, to Erin uh, for she got for some really cool footage, really yeah. cool footage, and the code, and some really nice dressed them up like. When I saw her fight, like I can't even tell. Like, how did you dress it up? It looks so seamless and so like all the things are really nicely hidden. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's jump back into Discord and say hi and see. There's some more funny <laughs> commentary here. Definitely check out the Discord at discord.gg/adafruit. Yes. Bruce is uh, saying that I need to this. make a Fona project. You can crank call someone. Uh, that's great. Crank it up. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's community makes. All right. I'm surprised people like this one. One second, I got uh, some Oof. more CAD stuff. So with the Pico project, I had to create a 3D model of the display that we're using. It's upside down. This is an OLED grayscale, 128 by 128. It's a 1.5 inches. It's is a real nice display. Is this the one that's display. supposed to be in the play date? No, that's a different nah, one, that's right? A, that's the sharp one. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's this right. Is different, but uh, CircuitPython support. It, it works on the Pico, the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Works on any of the Adafruit CircuitPython boards. Stemma QT. This thing's awesome. Um, I can't wait to to get it wired up. Just plug it in, and you can daisy chain it with the other stuff. With the Raspberry Pi Pico, another kind of hero uh, product that goes with it is this LED driver. This is the AW9523 just came out. Um, CircuitPython support, Arduino support, lets you do um, current-based dimming um, for powering um, not just LEDs, but it could also, it's a GPIO expander. So for us, with our 16 buttons, we're using up just about all of the pins on the Pico, so we need this GPIO expander to, uh, to drive our LEDs. And it's, you know, it's, it's connected over I2C, so we can daisy chain this to the OLED display, OLED display to the Pico. So we're having a nice demo party here with these boards. Um, but yeah, check that one out. It's in the, is it back in stock? No. Yet. Sorry guys, but you can always sign up to get notified when more are made. It's but back $5. in stock. It's $5, it's amazing. Liz was thinking about making a keyboard out of like four, cause you could stack four of them together and you get huh. a total of 64. Inputs, that's bananas. Yeah. So super cool. Um, yeah. Check that one out. Sign up for it if you're interested in uh, a GPIO expander slash LED driver. All right, now we can jump into uh, Community Makes. Every week we uh, 3D print something from the community and make a time lapse video out of it on Tuesdays. This week is this nice little decoration for your door handle. This is from... This is inspired by Alice his, in Wonderland? Yeah. What's his name? Just Doorknob, I, I think, from Alice in Wonderland. This With is the a, door, it looks like it says Dork Knob. <laughs> it's a Dork Knob. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just snap fits right onto your door. I'm going to guess this is a standardized, like, hole for it just most worked. doors. Because it worked on all of our doors, except any of the ones that have, like, the handle, you okay. know, where it's, like, a handle. Okay. Yeah, maybe measure it before we print it. <laughs> yeah, so that definitely worked out. Great, a nice little way to, I guess, Disney-fy, or what do they call it, bounding your yeah. door. <laughs> yeah, and that's me and my PJs. Um, you painted it, Brandy painted it. Yeah, my wife painted it? this because I had no time. Yeah, so a little bit of acrylic paint. I think we talked about acrylic paint mm -hmm. last week. Yeah, I was like, oh, why are the pupils all like cross-eyed? She's like, well, he's looking at your at his, his nose yeah. you know, when you grab the doorknob, so mm -hmm. that totally makes sense. I like the detail and you know how the keyhole it is in his how mouth. Did she paint the mouth without getting the lips. Oh no, she oh, definitely okay. painted that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the only uh, bummer, uh, what some people have commented on the video was the uh, subdivisions that are yeah, on. It's a little low polygon, lips. but I mean <laughs> that's fine, man. That looks cool. Yeah, I I don't think he put down what he uh, where he modeled it in. This was designed by Richard 
Uh, yeah, let me pull up the thing verse page. Oh, we have the name here, Richard something Kowalski or something. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> But excellent model nonetheless in terms of all the little details in there. And What's the back look like? What? The back. Oh, the back is just... You know, I really like the back because you printed it on the powder-coated bed and it like yeah, looks yeah. better than the, the other service. Uh, focus. Nah, it's I just a texture. Yeah. Look. Same blasted texture. Mm -hmm. So I have some little design there. No again. supports? Did you glue these pieces together? I'm just noticing no. the seam or Yeah, I think it's supposed to, like, I don't know. Yeah, but I, I see the seam there. It's probably just like the, the way that the um, the triangles when you export it. Uh, so it's definitely made like in, I don't know, Polygon SketchUp or editor, something. Polygon, or maybe Tinkercad. Does yeah, that's say definitely that? Tinkercad. Oh yeah, I you can, can see. Yeah, that is Tinkercad. That's yeah. probably why. Very cool. So, so shout out to uh, Thingiverse user RKX1. I think you, the name he has his here. name in there, yeah, Richard. Richard, uh, Richard uh, Kuwait Koski. And you can see all of Richard's uh, designs here. So sweet. Yeah. Great. Um, what yeah. inspired you to do it? You just I just saw it. Just saw it. Yeah, yeah I have an RSS feed of all of the uh, repositories for uh, STLs, and that showed up. It looked pretty cool. It's just fun. I'm a fan of, of adding faces to, to, to everyday objects. Mm -hmm. um, I've done that quite a few times, and uh, maybe I'm weird. <laughs> Excellent. We're all mad here. Yeah, so we're using mm -hmm. the silk PLA to get that nice shininess. Yeah, yeah, and silk gold mm -hmm. PLA. Other than that, it's pretty much it. Nice little uh, decal for your door. And I think that's all the community makes for this week. I can add any yeah. of these. Uh, I think that was from last Maybe week. We put this on the doorknob. You crank to open the door. Ha. It's ridiculous. All right, I think that is going to be it for this episode. Um, you sure? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, cool. We'll uh, close out the show with like all the shows that are happening mm -hmm. throughout the week. Later on tonight. Uh, I'll do it. It starts off with Sundays from the desk of Lady Ada. It happens on Sundays, hacker hours, somewhere between 8 to 10 p.m. Lamar will do uh, some, some cool stuff, show and telling. Um, she had a really cute hot plate that she showed. That was really So cute. adorable. Like you have to check it. that out. Man, I'm like losing my voice. And then uh, she does um, the great search with DigiKey as well. <clears throat> nice little search on terminals. And then... Mondays are normally CircuitPython meetings. This week was President's Day on Monday, so it happened on a Tuesday. On Tuesdays also is JP's product pick of the week. It's on uh, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Then on Wednesdays, we do the show <clears throat> at 11 a.m. in the morning. And then, and then, and then around 7.30 p.m. is ask, sorry. Could you talk? My voice is like really, really not. So PT and Lamar are back for this week's <clears throat> show and tell. Happens at 7.30 every single Wednesday. Rain or shine, there's always going to be a show and tell, so definitely yeah. make sure to show up. We post the link to StreamYard in the Discord, so make sure you're there a little bit earlier so you can get the link to that. The room fills up pretty fast, so just make sure you're there if you want to show off anything that you're working on. It doesn't have to be a project. It could be like your workspace or any other thing that maybe your kids are working on. Yeah, Kevin had a great in. one last week with that uh, Avery. That was really cute. It was really nice to host. Um, maybe we'll host again, but... Uh... It's nice to have PT back. And yeah, Lamar. and then right after that, it's going to be a full hour of Ask an Engineer every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I'm going to cover all the news going on in the maker world and all of the cool new projects, products, and secret, secret behind the stuff that Lamar and Phil are working on. So definitely tune in to that. And of course, you can ask questions to Lamar and business <coughs> questions to Phil. Always likes answering those. Yeah, Lamar. She's got lots of... Mm -hmm. 250 is the magic number. <laughs> so uh, John Parks comes back on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time to, to kind of, what would you say? All of the latest projects. Little project sprinkles of everything, like a little bit of the Tuesday, a little bit of what's coming up next, mm -hmm. a little bit of guide, a little bit of arcade, make arcade. It's the variety it's show. The variety show. It's got a bunch of stuff going on, so check it out. Lots of neat projects. Yeah. And then Scott's on Fridays with sometimes a special guest, Lady Ada, comes in, which is really awesome. So you can check that out every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. Shout out, Scott. Doing it up. 
And we'll say thank you, folks, for joining us in the Discord chat room. You guys are awesome to play with, to play with, <laughs> to, to, to chat on. with, to have, and and you know, talk back and forth. Yeah, I know it needs a curry, great, honey. I always get crank uh, up the doorknob. Caught up in all the comments, so definitely uh, join the Discord. Join uh, everybody hanging out in there. And then Jeff is saying that uh, Scott's. Oh yeah, I forgot. He's uh, That's right. skiing this Friday, so Sorry, he's, he's going to be hanging out Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, Always a fun time. Might... And you're going to see the playbacks, too, okay. uh, on the Just, just YouTube. make sure you don't stream at the same time John's streaming. Okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm sure he, he knows. They've, They're in the same time zone. Done a, okay. Yeah. Well, then there you go. All right. Thank you all for joining us this week. Yeah, we'll see you on the show and talk. Hope to see you there. We'll be there showing off the crank. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, remember to make a great day. Bye. See you later tonight.